My Australia Day accommodation. Look out, June E. Up with the 
greed and silliness of some of the clientele. I applaud those people working in service stations and essential services like childcare. All those people were at risk, but they fronted up during the, the lockdowns. When I look at the rest of the world, I thank God every day that I live here in the Riverina. Away from the absolute threat that some of my New York friends are facing daily with COVID. Ten years ago, I was applauding the Australian spirit in my speech to Grafton. I spoke about an amazing 13-year-old boy who, while in a situation of certain death in a raging flood in Toowoomba, opted to wait for his 10-year-old brother to be rescued. He drowned. His brother survived. So brave. Aussies can't sit by and watch their mates suffer, or even watch people who aren't their mates suffer. You won't find the brave in giving morning toilet paper and other items of sustenance as we saw in 2020, then trying to cash it in on eBay. In 2020, we got to witness the best and the worst extents of people. The frightened worst, I hope, are behind us. The good and giving are still all around us. I'm a product of the migrant heritage in Australia, and uh, I came from a Greek background, Greek Australian background. I'm a very happy hubby. I'm a dad, I'm a stepdad, and now a granddad. When my latest of five grandkids was born at the beginning of the lockdown in Melbourne, and I finally got to meet her in November when the border opened, and she was five months old. So I'm an artist, I'm a writer, with an MA after my name. I'm an aerospace engineer. Uh, I once worked for the ABC, as you heard, as a, a casual producer. I'm the son of a Greek Cypriot, a very successful publican with pubs all over Queensland. My mum worked as hard as dad in those pubs. They had four kids, I was the first. My wife likes to remind me I grew up privileged. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Anyway, Greeks have a work ethic that is based on hard work. It's a shame they have been. Anyway, you know an interesting fact about Greeks? You put two Greeks together and they'll start a cafe. You put three together and they'll build something like this. Australia has grown up a lot since I was a kid. But growing up in the 60s and 70s, was tough having a Greek name like Yana. Yana. Mm. I hated roll call in school. Teachers would call me Gary, Yini, Yaru, Yorick. I couldn't get my name right, it was terrible. Kids teased and laughed at my name. It was difficult, but it made me strong. High school was better though, because girls go, Yana. <laughs> what a groovy name. Oh, I love your name. It's so unusual. One girl said how sexy it was, but I couldn't understand what she was talking about. <laughs> I love my name from then on. And the point I'm trying to get to is nowadays I sign all my art with just my name, Yami. So that's my brand. Comes my final year of high school. What are you going to do in your life, boy? My dad says. I want to be an artist and I want to go to art school. Son, I would never tell you how to live your life, but you're going to have to get yourself a real job, do your art at night, and the weekends, you'll be much better off. Of course I wasn't happy. Dad had aspiration once of being in the Navy. I found that out after he sent me off to junior naval college. I was still only 16. I always wanted to be in the Navy, so you're going to be in there. <laughs> While there, I trained to be an aerospace engineer. <laughs> Sorry about that. I trained to be an aerospace engineer working on Skyhawk jets. Eventually, uh, my place of work was on board the HMAS Melbourne. It was an old aircraft carrier we used to have. And um, I was in for seven years. I loved the last two, uh, maybe the last two and a half, travelling the world in the action packed flight deck of the Melbourne. It was like being in Top Gun. In my downtime, though, my friends were my sketch pad and reading books, anything that saved me. Um, 
When you roam, my sailor mates would line up in bars, while I'd line up in places like the Sistine Chapel, seeking out the work of the masters and getting into trouble for, for laying on the floor to look up at the ceiling. I pretended I'd like fainted. <laughs> um, yeah, these, these works, though, as appealing and as, as wonderful it was to, to see, made me feel like a bit of a counterfeit, even daring to call myself an artist. But after seven years in the Navy, I left as a fully qualified aerospace engineer to go and paint. Nobody was interested in my art. Too realistic, the galleries used to say. I quickly learned that art was not going to keep a roof over my head or even pay for a bucket of chips to sustain me. So I had to get a real job and make my art in the evenings and on the weekends. My dad was right. Fast forward, a goal I had, along with being the greatest living artist in the world, I'm still waiting, was to work for Qantas on their 747 jets. They were a government company then and had an, an excellent place to work if one has to work in a proper job to support one's art. But what it did afford me with staff travel, which I love, was I flew all over the world looking at art museums, looking at the masters. So it was wonderful. But Qantas returned to me in 2003. I turned to full-time art. I ran live drawing sessions in the Gosford Regional Gallery, which got me front, in front of the artist Peter Smeet, who's a very famous portrait artist in Australia, if you want to Google him. He did the wrong thing painting me, though. He painted a portrait of me for the Archibald Prize, which got us on the front page of the local newspaper, the Express. Cedric, Cedric Milner, a philanthropist, saw the article so he was so impressed, he offered me a space to turn into a gallery. The space was at the back of his pub and shared with an operational bottle shop, right amongst the Walladay, the wine. So we're having wine at opening shows, you, you fill everyone up, fill everyone up with wine to so buy the art. So that's why we call it Walladay. The artists and the community loved it. New exhibitions were opening every month. The pub network heard of this new and crazy art gallery with a plane crashing in through the roof. It wasn't as beautifully decorated as this, but similar. And um, I had exhibition things like Suburbia, Oh My God, The Industry, Politics, Rude Nude, where I had 500 guests draw a nude as part of the opening hijinks. Uh, before I knew it, I had four galleries running through Sydney and the Central Coast hanging 36 exhibitions a year. I was, I was talk of the town, and I was breaking all the rules in sharing art. I was upsetting the real galleries in Paddington, so much so that they tried to close me down with councils and all that. And they even had the police order one of my exhibitions closed down, and it was an ex exhibition of artistic news, so it wasn't dirty. But uh, I couldn't believe it. I didn't take the exhibition down, I went down to Oxford Street to one of those Hollywood shops and I bought this police tape and uh, what I did was covered all the naughty bits in police tape and I put up signs saying that this exhibition has been banned by Surrey Hills Police. Well, that got me massive media. TV, radio, Sydney papers, hundreds and hundreds of people came to see that show. It was so lucky it was banned. People were watching my, my revolution in art sharing. The super centre in Tucker had 26 empty shops because they lost 70% of their tenants. They called me. You think you could put some art in a couple of our shops to make the customer experience a little better? I said, why a couple? I'll fill the place. I was being a bit brave, my dude. 2007, six months later, 64 artists were working out of 24 studios. It's from there. Studio galleries. Over a thousand people attended the official opening and uh, I dubbed the project the Super Art Project. It had to be super because it was massive. In 2009 I was offered a solo exhibition in Montreal in Canada. It was time to put my energy into my own art. So I installed management teams to run the array of galleries and I went back to my studio to paint for my first international exhibition. So exciting. 
The same year, Qantas asked me to come back after I'd been retrenched in 2003. So, of course, I said yes. Uh, my roster was perfect. It was four days on, five days off. Couldn't ask for anything better as an artist. So it gave me plenty of time to paint. Qantas gave me leave to have my exhibition in Canada where my, a New York curator saw my art. Then in 2010 and 2011, Qantas gave me leave again for my exhibitions in New York. Step back a bit, 2011, I met Kristen in Qantas. She's an aerospace engineer too. We got married, then retrenched in 2013. Kristen got a job in the oil and gas industries in the Pilbara. So we moved 6,000 kilometers to Paratha a week after our wedding. We don't muck around. Now I was a full-time artist. Well, almost. Um, I worked at the ABC Northwest Studios in Paratha three days a week as a casual producer story maker. I loved it. In 2014, Kristen gave me leave to attend a two-month artist residency in Beijing. While there, I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had two exhibitions, and it was a truly magnificent experience. And, you know, apart from all the rhetoric going on nowadays, you can get there and have a look at the place, it's well worth it. 2016, is everyone bored again? No, no. 2016, bye-bye Karatha, hello Newcastle. We hated it. Why? The traffic, the crowds, and of course the real estate prices. So we began searching for a place in the country. 18 months of weekend driving to regional New South Wales. We even went to regional Victoria, looking for a place. Soon we found a place in Ardleton. Two houses on the one block, attached to the sunroom. Debt free, mortgage free, a home and a studio, which was perfect. In 2010, I'm reiterating here, sorry. <laughs> I won an Australia Day Award for Arts and Culture in my region of the Central Coast. My gallery and the super, super art project gave council enough faith to build the $28 million art house in Wyong. It's a state-of-the-art 400-seat theatre with a magnificent gallery, art gallery attached. I was on the I'm uh, sorry, I was on the design team of that with Wild Council, and because of that, they nominated me to become an Australia Day ambassador. God knows why. And as ambassador artist, of course. Um, this is my 11th year as an ambassador, and I'm very, very proud. Of so. On Australia Day, I encourage everyone to share a bit about their story, listen to stories of others, and celebrate the people around you, because we're all part of the story. Thank you very much. Happy Australia Day, and thank you for having us. Thank you, Neil Smith and the gang in Juni. Kristen and I enjoyed our time there. It was the best one I've done for a while. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks again. Happy Australia Day, everyone. And don't forget, share your stories.